Is the perfect AI image editor here? If you haven't heard by now, there's a brand new AI image editor and generator going around called Flux Content, made by Black Forest Labs, the same creators as the model we all know and love, Flux. So today I'm gonna to show you guys how you can use it and some of the amazing things you can do with this AI model. Now, unfortunately, the current version of Flux Context is only available via API, which means we don't have access to a model that we can download and install on our own machine. But they said it is coming. So expect me to cover it when it comes out. So for today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to use Flux Context on my own AI image generation platform, KaijuGen. To use Flux Context, it comes in a handful of flavors. Once you've signed up or logged in, you'll get presented to a page like this. To start using Context, go ahead and set your image models to image, and you can find the models here in the dropdown. Alternatively, if you find this a little bit cumbersome to use, all of the models are also listed over here on the models page. Go ahead and filter by image. Scroll down to the F area, and here you'll find Flux Dev, Flux Context Max, Flux Context Pro, and Flux Schnell. And in fact, Context comes in three flavors. There's Max, Pro, and Omni. The difference between Pro and Max is pretty small. Pro is a little bit cheaper and faster to use, but Max is a larger model, resulting in potentially better quality images and better prompt adherence. Omni, on the other hand, allows us to use multiple images as inputs so that we can put them together in a final image. For now, we're just gonna start with Flux Context Pro and try out a couple of cool things that we can do with this model. Let's start with something super simple. We're gonna go ahead and grab this image of Lydia, one of my AI generated characters. To do that, click on this little link over here and then on this input image icon. We're gonna remove the previous image that I was using and just drop in the link. And you see that it instantly picks up the image that we're using as a reference. Let's go ahead and close that. And let's just change the art style. So we're gonna go ahead and change this image to animate art style. Let's go ahead and click generate and you'll see the image queued up over here. Let's also try changing this to a Simpsons art style. And we can see here that the image has been converted to this anime art style. And if we look at the original image down here, we can see that the structure is very similar. She's standing over here with the chopping board over here, cutting up the red hot red peppers, some little peppers over here in the front and a container here on the right. Going back and looking at both of these images, you can see that they are a perfect fit. We've got the kitchen pieces in the background, the little container over here on the right, and the peppers chopped up here, as well as the red hot text transferred over perfectly. So one of the really cool things that Flux Context can do is it will maintain the structure of your image wherever it deems necessary. It's very intelligent at figuring out when it has to create something new or when it needs to just edit your existing image. In this particular case, it's followed the image almost exactly putting everything in the correct place. Now let's try something a little bit cooler. Let's go back to the source image and let's say that we want to change the camera angle. Let's try move the camera to the side. Okay, we've still got the same image that we're referencing. And you can see here that it's not perfect, but for the most part, let's actually look at the images side by side. And we can first of all definitely agree that it's the same character. And the camera has in fact moved a little bit to the side. We've got here a little bit more of an angle. The container is in the same place, the peppers are in the same place, and we can see here that things are definitely moved a little bit. The hands have gotten a little bit weird here where she's no longer holding the knife properly, but the hands are in pretty much the same place, but it has done a pretty good job. If you want good results, I do suggest doing a couple of iterations, but let's try and move this a little bit more aggressively. Let's try zooming out and then let's try zooming in. Now you'll see one of the cool things that we can do with this by using Flux Context Pro to manipulate camera angles, it gives us this incredible opportunity to start to create consistent environments with characters and their locations to turn into videos. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that a little bit later. So we can see here that we've got a more zoomed in shot. And again, it's almost perfect. We've got the arm here, the arm here, the hand over here. Unfortunately, it didn't quite give us that profile shot. Let's try it one more time. And a lot of this has to do with prompting. If I figure out a good prompting guide for Flux Context in terms of 
changing things around, I will publish that over on my Patreon. There we go. This is a much better image. And again, you can see that the hand is in the right place. It's definitely holding the knife correctly and it is at a little bit more of an angle. Not quite the portrait shot that we wanted. Let's try one more time and see if we get the results. In the meantime, what are some of the other cool things that we can do with Flux Context? Oh, there we go. So it did change the image to a profile shot, but it kept her where she is. So one of the really important things with Flux Context is you have to be very explicit in your prompting. So we've changed the angle to a side profile. Let's try the camera to a side profile. So we've seen so far what we can do with Flux Context. We can change the art style of an image. We can, slightly better, change the perspective of how we're looking at the image. But did you know you can also edit an image? Let's try something really simple. Remove the text from the apron, okay? If we come back to the side profile, it's still not quite perfect. I'm sure with a little bit more aggressive prompting, maybe if we describe the kitchen a little bit better, you could get the result. But you can see that it's still the same character for the most part, and she's wearing the same clothing, everything else is the same. If we look at the edit shot over here, you can see that the red hot is gone from the apron. And again, it continues to be the same image. Let's try adding in some text. So we'll grab the one without the text. Let's change that as our reference image. On the apron, put the text spicy chef. We can also change the hair color. There we go, spicy chef. We can change her hair to red. There we go, she's now a redhead. We can even change the lighting. So this has relighting features. Okay, not the best choice. Let's be a little more explicit in our lighting. Okay, make the lighting more dramatic with window pane shadows casting into the background and cinematic lighting on the subject. Let's see what that does. Okay, not quite what we wanted. We do have the window pane shadow on the background, but the lighting has kind of made it a little bit more pasty. Let's try a simpler prompt. Apply Rembrandt lighting to the subject. I mean, it definitely does look more cinematic. I will say that. Oh, there we go. So this is the Rembrandt lighting applied image, and this is the original. And you can definitely see there is a little bit more definition in the shadows. So those are some of the things that you can do with the vanilla flux model. And in fact, some of the issues that we were having might even be solved by using the max model. Let's try it out. So let's go to the flux context max and let's try applying Rembrandt lighting. Let's try the apply set dramatic cinematic lighting. And then let's try move the camera to a side profile angle and let's see what we get. And unfortunately, I don't think we're getting any significantly better results. So there are some limitations in what this can do. It looks like the lighting components are not the best. You might be better off opting for a relight, but perhaps some simple adjustments will work. The profile image is still slightly better, but it's still putting her in the same place with all of the elements down here. So we'll probably have to be a little more explicit in our prompting to try and get a good result. But that should give you an idea of everything you can do with Flux Context. But we're not done just yet. If we open up our image models down here and come down to Context Omni, this is where things start to get really fun. So with Context Omni, we can apply more than one image. And I've got a couple of examples here, which I'm gonna show you now. You can set up to four images. So we've got image one, image two, image three, and image four. And what I did this time is we've got this character over here. And what we did over here is we put her in over here in our reference. And then I grabbed this yellow dress. And yes, we can do outfit changes with this model. So we grabbed this little dress, stuck it on over here as image number two. I used the prompt, put the yellow dress on the woman. And when we click generate, this is the result that we got. This one over here, very impressive. And if we have a look at the dress, it's been applied almost perfectly. We've got the right cut of the shape over here. It's got the strappy component. The print has been transferred over perfectly. The only thing that I would fault the model for is it's added this little seam down here, which does change the print a little bit, but it's a great way to get an idea of what an outfit is gonna look like on you or on another character. But it doesn't stop there. Because Kaiju Gen makes it really easy to work with existing images that you've created, I went over here, grabbed the image, and I gave it the prompt of the woman sitting in a cafe. And we got this image over here. I then took this image, so we grabbed it in here, dropped it in over here. And then in the second 
image slot I dropped in this animate art style image and I'll show you guys the prompt I used in a minute but by setting in a reference of the image I've already shown you when we just say animate image what the model tends to default to which is this anime art style over here. If we want to follow this art style a little bit more closely and use it as a reference, you can get a result that looks like this. And what's really cool, this is where I really love the explicit nature of the model. I said, turn the character into this anime art style. It did that, but it kept the background realistic. And I really actually like this combination art style. Right, And the prompt that I use for that, if you click this little button over here, it allows you to re-see the prompt of an image that you used before. Apply the anime art style from the cartoon image to the woman sitting in the cafe. So because it's an explicit model, you do have to give a little bit of a description of what you wanted to do with what image and help it understand which image you want to take something from and apply it to. If you just put apply the anime art style, you'll get pretty much the same image. I got this. If you look at the prompt for this one, this was my first attempt, applied the art style to the woman sitting in the cafe. It wasn't explicit enough. So what else can we do with this model? Well, there's a couple of really cool things. Let's go back to Lydia wearing the apron, drop it in there, and then I'm gonna browse my previous uploads and we're gonna grab the Kaiju Gen logo. And we're going to apply the logo to the woman's apron. And we're gonna try that. So I'm actually glad it messed up here. This happened to me earlier as well. You can see here, that something similar happened. So we need to be a little bit more explicit. So here we said, apply the logo to the woman's apron. Let's change the word and let's use, place the logo on the woman's red apron. Place the logo on the woman's red apron. And let's also try one more time with something a little bit more explicit. Place the black and white logo on the woman's red apron. Let's try that as well and see if one or both of those give us a good result. Okay, there we go. So we did get the logo on the apron. It's not perfect. And again, with a little bit of prompting, we can probably adjust it. It could also be that the quality of the image I'm using as the source logo could be problematic as it is trying to remove the background and manipulate it. And that's giving it a problem. So let's try an image that's already been pre-processed. So for the purposes of today's video, let's just, so for the purposes of today's video, let's create a quick logo that we can use as a sample. Let's make a quick logo of the spicy pepper. There we go. That's good enough. Let's go ahead and grab that as our logo reference image. Let's reapply the same prompt and let's generate and see if we get a better quality result. There we go. So like I said earlier, the problem was the quality of my origin logo. If you look here, the logo has been applied perfectly to the apron. Well, almost perfectly. We've got a little bit of the top kind of leaking out here, but we can always tell it to make it a little bit smaller. Finally, another cool thing that we can do with Omni is we can put two characters together. So we've got Lydia over here in her red apron. Let's grab this model over here who doesn't have a name. So if you guys want to suggest any names, please feel free to drop them down in the comment section below. Let's drop it over here and let's change the prompt to two women arguing in a supermarket. And there you have it. Pretty good representation of both characters. She's still wearing the red apron, although it doesn't go all the way down. She's still wearing the yellow dress, got the same hair, got the same makeup. Could definitely be the two characters. It's not perfect. There's a couple of issues here with the hands, but I'm sure if we generated a couple of more instances, we could sort it out. There's also probably the fact that this is a portrait image and Flux starts to get a little bit flustered when you start to put too many things in a close space together. Let's try and widen the frame of the image a little bit. Let's make the aspect ratio four by three. Give them a little bit more horizontality to work with. And there you have it, a um, somewhat better result. I definitely feel we're starting to lose a little bit of quality in the faces over there. So probably trying to put two people in a single image is the weakest thing I've seen this model be able to do. Now, we've got all these amazing images. What if we want to animate them? Well, Kaijugen can take care of that for you as well. If we come down to video, We've also got a massive range of AI video models, including one vase where you can actually put control to the characters that you're working on. Uh, I just put out a video on that if you want to check it out. We've got Minimax, LT, Kling 1.6, Kling 2, and the new Kling 2.1, all available here on Kaiju Den. For today, we're just going to grab the one image to video 
480. Let's go ahead and grab the reference image over here. Open up the reference image, drop in that link, open up the advanced parameters for video. And I don't need 240 frames. I'm happy with just 81 for now. All of these other parameters look good. And I'm just gonna say women shopping red peppers. And let's go ahead and click generate. And it's that easy to turn your images into videos. And here we have our first video. Let's check it out. And you can see it right here. She's there chopping up the spicy red hot peppers. And boy, is she enjoying it. And we've got the other video over here. We're able to take the video of the two women arguing in the supermarket. And we've got them over here. Wow, she looks really heated up and is definitely looking like the lady here on the right is the one that messed up. Interestingly, I just realized this. When we did the white shot image, it actually swapped their outfits. I didn't realize that. And now here it looks like the lady with the red shirt is the one who's the employee. She messed up and the shopper over here is telling her off. Lydia is vicious. So as you guys can see, Kaijugen makes it really easy for you guys to generate an image, edit it with flux context, and then turn it into a video. And that's pretty much it. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please do like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out. And I hope you guys consider using KaijuGen as your image generation platform. This is my own AI image and video generation platform and using it directly supports the channel. Alternatively, if you want to support the channel in other ways, please do consider supporting me on Patreon. I try and draw all kinds of extra goodies for Patreon supporters over there, as well as early access to my videos. Finally, please do come by the Discord. I love to see the stuff that you guys are creating, and although I don't have a Discover section on Kaiju Gen just yet, if you want to share your images and videos, talk about what you're creating, get ideas, please do come by the Discord. We love to hear about that kind of stuff. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Thanks so much, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.